Hello and welcome to the Fairwinds Energy Education Podcast. My name is Today we are welcoming back Arnie Gunderson from his trip to Monroe, Michigan, where he testified in front of the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board against the NRC. Today we will catch up with Arnie and find out just how this hearing went. Arnie, what happened out in Monroe? Yeah, it was a fascinating meeting. You know, let's catch up a little bit. We talked in the last podcast about how the deck is stacked against the public. It was me as an expert talking to the judges for three hours, and then Detroit Edison brought in four experts who spoke for less time, and then the NRC brought in three guys who talked for about three hours too. So it was me for three plus hours and seven other people for much less. So that's an example of the uphill battles the public has to fight. But this meeting was, was critical, and, and I hope that there's listeners here that work in the nuclear industry because there's a fundamental change that happened in the nuclear industry, a frightening fundamental change that happened in the nuclear industry that I think our listeners need to know about. So tell us about that fundamental change. What, what shifted? The nuclear industry traditionally has always had a quality assurance program at the beginning of a project. You know, when you build a nuclear plant, you have to drill holes into the ground to see if the the rock underneath the plant is strong enough to hold the enormous weight of a nuclear plant. And that has to be done in a quality-assured manner. What do you mean exactly by a quality-assured manner? Quality assurance at a nuclear plant is what makes a nuke a nuke. It's the paper that goes behind all of the analysis that you do. The example I like to use is if you have an American Kennel Club, AKC, poodle, and you let the poodle loose in the dog park for six hours, and then the poodle comes back pregnant, you've lost control of the paper. You don't have quality assurance to assure that those puppies are indeed AKC puppies. Well, it's the same thing in a nuclear plant. If you don't have good paperwork, you've got no assurance that the plant is being well designed and that the core borings were adequately uh, performed. Okay, so tell me this. When does the, the plant or the utility need to have that quality assurance by? That's the key question in these hearings. Traditionally, the question was, as soon as you started, as soon as you told the Nuclear Regulatory Commission that you're going to license a site, you had to have a program in place. But what happened out at Fermi was that they decided to save money and they didn't have a program in place. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission caught them and in 2009 wrote a series of scathing emails saying, you know, you got to go back to square one here. You didn't have a program in place. But in these hearings, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission flip-flopped. And this is why people in the nuclear industry should be terrified about their testimony which happens to have happened on Halloween as well. Another reason to be terrified. What happened was this. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission reinterpreted the law. The law says that you're an applicant when you begin the process of applying. And the NRC flip-flopped between 2009 when they wrote up Detroit Edison and these hearings. And they said, no, you're not an applicant until the day you drop the papers off on our desk. So for Two years, Detroit Edison didn't need a quality assurance program. And that's what came out in these hearings. The NRC just used extrajudicial process to change the law. The law says you're an applicant when you are applying, not when you drop the papers off on our desk. Okay. So tell us a little bit more specifically about your testimony and the arguments that you were making. Well, I had a ton of expert reports, literally, I don't know, two inches of expert reports, and I think they're on the website last from last week. I caught them in this lie. They had flip-flopped and not chosen to inform anybody of the flip-flop. So it went on for three hours where the three judges were grilling me and just me, and I think I did a pretty good job. After that, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission got up, and the three judges really ripped into the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So a couple of things they said. The NRC guy acknowledged these old emails that they wrote, and I, I said that, uh, um, you know, you said in 2009 
these people didn't have a QA program. And he says, yeah, but we've changed our position. We have a new position that QA wasn't required. Did he explain why they had that new position, or was it just that they had a new position? Well, we should put up the testimony of this guy on the site. I'll give you the NRC word for it. The judges said that the NRCs had exhibited circular logic. They were basically chasing their tail for three hours. Um, another thing the judges said was that it was very troubling. And another one was that their position was, quote, totally incoherent. The judges seem to be supporting my decision that you need a quality assurance program from the very first minute you put a shovel in the ground on a nuclear plant. Well, it seems like that would be critical in creating something that has the potential to impact millions and millions of people if something were to go wrong. Worse than that was the other thing that came out. I told the judges that if you go by their new NRC position, that you're only an applicant on the day you drop off the papers, that means there's no whistleblower protections because the whistleblower law says it applies to applicants. People in the nuclear industry who I know listen to this, if you're working on a plant now and it's not yet delivered to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, you have no protections as a whistleblower. I talked about how the fabric of the license was ripped to smithereens here because now you don't have quality assurance and you don't have whistleblower protection. There's another law that says an applicant can't lie, called materially false statements. Well, if you're not an applicant, you can lie to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So the new position of the NRC disables not just quality assurance, but the whole safety net that the public expects from our regulator. Why has this position changed? This doesn't make any sense to me. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has on their logo to protect people and to protect the environment. This seems completely contradictory to that. Yeah, th this is a, another example of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission staff capitulating to corporate industry pressure and making nuclear plants cheaper. The whole goal here was to make this Fermi-3 nuclear plant cheaper. And the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has just rolled over and is allowing that to happen. It's not the first time I s I've seen this, not even the first time I've seen this this year. I was working on the San Onofre plant. There's four expert reports on our site about that. The NRC staff was going to allow Edison, Southern California Edison, to start back up. And it was the efforts of Senator Barbara Boxer and Friends of the Earth that forced the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to do the job that we're paying them to do. This is all about protecting the public health and safety. Well, they didn't do it at San Onofre without congressional pressure, then they seem not to have learned that lesson. And here we are at Fermi, not just worried about the Fermi nuclear plant, but at the national implications of a policy that doesn't protect the whistleblower and doesn't protect the public until the moment the papers are dropped on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's desk. This is very concerning, and I think it should be very concerning to the public and to, to the people, certainly, around Detroit. It makes me speechless, and I tell you, it made the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board judges furious. One judge started to tremble and literally threw the rule book down on the table. He was so angry at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. But I don't know at the end of the day whether or not they're going to change anything. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission expert basically said, you know, if you disagree with us, we'll get our lawyers involved and we'll bring this up to the five commissioners to overrule you. So it looks like the Nuclear Regulatory Commission may have an internal fight. Their own legal staff at the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board may disagree with their technical staff, and the two of them will bring that argument up to the full Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And those are five people... And as we've talked about before, four of the five are essentially in the industry's pocket. They will likely vote to strip the public of its right to be protected by having a quality assurance program and protecting whistleblowers. What can we do to, to remedy this situation? Is there anything or are we just helpless? Well, for the next 75 days, there's a bunch of legal motions flying back and forth. And then the Atomic Safety and Licensing Board will write its final decision. So the decision's not been made yet. I suspect that when that comes out, you'll certainly hear from Fairwinds again. Hopefully they'll uphold the position that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's position is convoluted. But if they don't, we'll have to contact our readers and ask them to 
write directly to the chairman of the NRC and rectify this because it's truly dangerous. We found out a couple months ago that a whistleblower on the Belafonte plant, which was one of these new licenses not yet in the ground, tried to get NRC protection and it was refused because they hadn't filed the paper. So this problem is not limited to Fermi. It's in fact already being implemented nationwide. I guess it's our job here at, at Fairwinds to alert people that whistleblowers of the world, you are not protected by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission until the moment the application is officially on their desk. Well, that's not really a surprise to you, is it, Arnie? No, I, I learned the hard way that whistleblowers <laughs> are not protected. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Nat. It's, uh, it's not a surprise to me, and, and I've been saying it for 23 years now. It's interesting to have the Nuclear Regulatory Commission say on the stand that whistleblowers are not protected either. It's a, it's a major concern. Well, Arnie, thank you for going out to Detroit and Monroe, Michigan, and fighting against the powers that consistently try to take advantage of the public and just are slave to the almighty dollar. All right. Thanks, Nat. We'll keep you informed.